If you get a flat tire resulted from a hole from a nail or screw, you can repair the tire yourself without the need of expensive equipment and no need for balancing the tire at the end. You can temporarily repair the tire with the plug or permanently replace the tire with a one piece plug patch or depending on the angle of the hole, you might need a two piece plug patch. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you would like to see more videos like this. The first thing you want to note is whether or not the tire is repairable for a safety reason. It is not recommended to repair the tire outside of this zone. I plugged this tire in an unrepairable area because I got a flat when I needed to get somewhere quickly. Plugging a tire is a temporary fix and in this case I plugged this tire two weeks ago and it's now leaking. But remember guys, this is an unrepairable area. Before I show you how I permanently repair a hole in a tire without the need for balancing afterwards, I will quickly do an overview as to how to quickly plug a tire. First, feed the plug through that needle hole, then apply some rubber cement to help with lubrication and it also help with sealing the hole. So first I will remove the leaking plug. In your case, you might be removing a nail or a screw from your tire. You can see right there that I have a perfect hole because when I was plugging this tire I used this tool to clean the hole. You can get this to purchase at any Walmart or on eBay. So you just simply push the plug inside the hole leaving about one inch on the outside which you will trim. You can test to see if there's any leak. It is highly likely that it will leak or might not leak quickly enough for you to add air frequently. But the size of the hole will determine how quickly it leaks. Now let's now move to permanently repair a tire without the need for balancing the tire. This is a plug I did which is a temporary fix. I did this about three weeks ago and it's still not leaking but right now I'm gonna do a permanent repair. This is a valve seal remover. I will remove the valve seal to get the air out of the tire more quickly and having the valve seal out helps with breaking the bead of the tire. So I'm gonna remove the valve cap then remove the valve seal. This is a Harbor Freight tire changer. This tire changer is able to both remove the tire and mount the tire. But if your tire is thin, it will be more difficult to break the bead. So you might need to affix the tire changer to the ground or on a two inch pallet or plywood. I did not have any difficulty breaking the bead. I just used this long bar provided. Use one foot on the back of the bead breaker while I push down. I will be breaking the bead on only one side of the tire. Doing this will avoid the need for balancing the tire at the end. One key thing to note, where the hole is positioned on the tire will determine which bead you break. So if the hole is closer to the outer part of the tire, you will break the bead that is closest to the hole in the tire. In my case, the hole is closer to the outer section of the tire. So I'll place the tire flat on the ground and I will use some electrical tape to wrap around the edge of the wheel just to prevent scratches. And this works very well. You can wrap the tape around the tire two or three times if you wish to have a thicker protection. Then I add some liquid soap to provide lubrication to help remove the tire. I only added it to the section that I will be starting. I am using the bar provided with the tire changer and I purchased this 24 inch tire remover iron at Arbor Freight. It's very cheap, it's about five or seven dollars. So I use both irons first and then I place the larger iron down and use the 24 inch iron to work my way around the tire. This is very easy, it doesn't take a lot of effort, but the thinner the wall of your tire, it will be more difficult to remove. This is an 18 inch wheel, the wall of the tire is very thick, so it's much easier to remove.
I'm gonna put some marking on the other side of the wheel where the bead was not broken. And if the bead is broken at any point of the repair, you will need to go and have your tire balance. As you can see, I made the markings right where some arrows are on the tire. And if at any point the arrows and the markings are not aligned, you will need to get your tire balanced. I took the tire inside. I'm gonna slide this two by four inch piece of wood between the tire and the wheel. Then I'm gonna twist to create a space for me to work. And as you can see right there, that's enough space for me to work. So that's the plug that is currently in the tire. And as you can see, it's closer to the edge where I broke. And I have full access to where the hole is. That is why it is important to break the bead on the side of the tire that is closer to the hole. I will now use a pliers to remove the plug that is in the hole. After removing the plug, I am going to use this tool to clean the hole. You can get this tool to purchase with any tire plug kit. Now I will be using the one piece patch plug kit and I bought the largest one available because it will cover a larger repair area. I also will be using this rubber cement and having one with a brush like this is more ideal. I will be also using this rotary tool to buff the area. This rotary tool comes with an attachment that can fit in small spaces. And this is how you install the attachment. Now this is the tool that the professional used so you need to properly buff the area before applying rubber cement. I'll be using my rotary tool, it's gonna take longer but it can get the job done. I used this LED light because I couldn't see inside the tire properly. And as you can see right now, the tire is properly buffed. I'm now going to apply the rubber cement. Ensure that you cover the entire repair area with the rubber cement. It's better you use too much than too little. I also will try to get some of the rubber cement inside the hole by using this tool to push it in. Now, the angle of the hole will determine the patch system that you use. After you remove the nail or the screw from the hole, you can stick this tool inside the hole to see the angle of the hole. If this tool stands in this red area here, you can use the single patch plug system. If after you stick the tool in, it's on any of these angle in the gray area, you need to use a two piece patch system. You first need to insert the plug piece, then you buff it down to a level, apply rubber cement, then you put a patch over it. So this is a two patch system. And after you apply the patch, then you use a stitcher to stitch the patch properly and remove the plastic piece. But I will be using the, the single plug patch system. I do not have a professional stitcher, but I found something that could be used. This is actually a piece of a brake caliper tool that is used to do a brake job. You can buy the stitcher on eBay or Amazon. I will be applying some of the rubber cement to the side of the plug patch. Then I remove the plastic covering from the plug patch. You will want to wait until the rubber cement is dried on the tire before installing the plug patch. When you look at the rubber cement on the tire, it should be matte black. The end of the patch has a metal sticking out. You just need to feed that metal piece through the hole of the tire. Once you get it in, you use a pliers to pull the plug through. Once you got it through, 
you need to pull again to have it sealed onto the tire it should show a dimple on the inside and I'm seeing a dimple right there now I'm going to use the stitcher to stitch the tire now this is a professional stitcher that you can purchase to stitch the tire but I'm going to use my homemade stitcher it got the job done after I finish stitch the tire I remove the plastic covering and then I'm going to add some rubber cement over the repair area just to help with the seal now I can trim off the excess of the plug now I'm going to use a vacuum just to vacuum the rubber trims that is left in the tire after buffing the tire now it's time to put on this side of the tire I'm going to use some Dawn soap for lubrication So after I get it started, I'm going to use my feet to at least take it around halfway. Then I'm going to use the 24 inch iron to put on the tire. The tire is actually easier to put on than to take off. So the tire is fully on and now it's a time to check if you broke the bead on the other side. So this tire should be still balanced. So I did a good job in not breaking the other side of the bead. So now it's just to apply air to the tire. I have this mini air compressor that I purchased on Amazon. It can go up to 150 psi which is very high for such a small air compressor i will put a link in the description below so i will start the inflation of the tire without the valve seal and after it gets over 30 psi i will install the valve seal After installing the valve seal, I will complete the inflation of the tire. This tire should be inflated to 35 psi, but I put it to 35.5 because some of the air will be lost when removing the air compressor. And now you can test to see if you successfully repair the hole, and in my case, it was successful. Now it's time to get the tire on. And I will tighten each nut using a torque wrench. It can be difficult to remove a wheel if you over tighten these nuts. So the lug nuts of this Toyota Highlander should be torqued at 76 foot pounds. I will run it off to 80, but that's fine. So when tightening these nuts, you should stop at one click. Once you hear the click, you reach the correct foot pounds. And that's it guys, if you find this video helpful, please give a like and subscribe. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the notification bell. See you on the next one guys.